Hello and welcome to an episode of the Sports Stories Podcast where we talk about all the stories in today's sports world. So today we're going to take a look at the legacy of Ryan Fitzpatrick, also known as Fitzception. So, coming out of Harvard, Ryan Fitzpatrick had scored a 48 out of 50 on the Wonder Lake test. So, for those of you who don't know what it is, the Wonder Lake is kind of like another form of an IQ test. And many NFL players take the, take the Wonder Lake and that many NFL teams use it to like evaluate a player's intellect outside of like game instincts, I guess. And the 4850 is the highest score of anybody who any NFL player who had ever taken the test. So that was really impressive. But kind of Harvard, he wasn't really looked at by any teams, except in the seventh round, the Rams were like, why not? And they selected him to be their third third string quarterback. So, in the 2005 season, Jake, which is his rookie season, Mark Bull, the starter Mark Bolger got injured, putting Jane Martin to starting duties. And after he got injured halfway through a game against the Texans, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the third string quarterback, had to come in to finish the game. And coming in in the third quarter, down 21 to zero, he threw for over 300 yards and led them to a 33 to 27 comeback victory in overtime and he's only one of seven players to ever ever throw for over 300 yards in their debut so this is the one side of Fitzception that you see fits magic and then two weeks later in his next start in Minnesota he did and they lost the game he ended up throwing five interceptions which just goes to show you the re- the first real case of Fitzception shows something brilliant and flashes his crazy potential and then put up a real stinker that made people not believe in you. So after 2005 the Rams let him go and after not playing in 2006 or 2007 he had joined the Bengals and and he led them to a 4-7-1 record in his starts putting up not, not really crazy numbers and then they released him after that season and he went to the Bills in 2009, where he would spend more time with them than any other team in his career. And in 2009, he, he had the best season of his career, throwing for 23 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. And they and then the Bills got fooled. And in 2011, they signed him to a 6-year, $59 million contract. Now, this is where the biggest part of Fitzception comes in. If you don't really have any expectations for him and just let him play, he will be, he will play lights out. But if you if you sign him to a big contract or have any kind of expectation for him, then that's where he's got you, and he'll go back to being one of, the, and he will go back to being one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. So this is what the Bills experienced, because after the 2011 contract, he ended up going back to Fitz Tragic. And never put up those numbers in his career again, and went back to being a stinker and of a quarterback. And the and the Bills never got that kind of potential back after the 2010 season. So then, in 2013, he went to the Titans, and in his nine games as a starter, he went three and six, not putting up crazy numbers, and. The Titans released him after that one season, and then because it, and then he went to the Texans the next year, and and in his one year he he threw for 17 touchdowns to eight interceptions and a six and six record in in his starts, but even with those in, some impressive numbers, it wasn't enough for them to resign him. So then in 2015 2016, he went to probably one of the most infamous points in his career with the Jets. And in 2015, he he led them to a 10 and 6 record, and he threw for 31 passing touchdowns, which was a franchise record. And he is, and he assumed that because of these numbers, he would be the unquestioned star going into next season. And he and because he's playing a one year deal in 2015, he wanted he wanted the big bucks going into 2016 because of what he did in the 2015 season, and it became one of the most infamous holdouts in the NFL. And and Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Jets 
to having a stupid old out because the Jets are an incompetent organization who don't know how to communicate with players, really. And after a laughable holdout, they entered training camp, signed him to a one-year $12 million deal for 2016. But again, with Fitzception, he, he didn't play very well at all in 2016 after that really, really impressive performance in 2015. And they went, and they ended up going five and eleven, and that was the last draw with the Jets, and they released him. And in twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, with the Buccaneers, so he was meant to be like the backup to Jameis Winston. And when Winston got injured, he was meant to be just the replacement. And and then when Winston came back, he was meant to go back to being a backup. But he, but what's this? Ryan Fitzpatrick thrown for over 300 yards per game in Winston's absence. Oh no, the Buccaneers have a quarterback controversy. And this is what Fitzpat Fitzception is. Ryan Fitzpatrick has the potential of brilliance, and when he doesn't have expectations or when he's just filling in, he will play lights out. But then when you get expectations for him, he, he just goes back to being a sinker and of a quarterback and when throwing for 300 yards per game and then James Winston came back Ryan Fitzpatrick ended up still playing for them in 2017 and 2018 you know mainly as a backup and when James Winston came back he ended up going back to being Fitztragic as in not not his Fitzmagic self but just the the worser of the two alter egos, <laughs> I guess. And after the Buccaneers had witnessed Fitz tragic enough, they released they released him. And in twenty in twenty nineteen this past year, with the Miami Dolphins, he ended up being the starter after recently acquired quarterback Josh Rosen seemed to be not the answer after a few losses. He was the starter for Miami for the rest of the year and he actually looked funnily enough like a competent quarterback while the Dolphins were trying to tank and they ended up winning a couple of games despite trying to lose as much as they could and Fitzpatrick said that when the Dolphins drafted Tua in the Tua Tagovailoa in the 2020 draft he wanted to be either the starter to begin the 2020 season or or just like the veteran to help out and teach Tua, considering maybe the Dolphins won't start Tua immediately, and I just feel so bad for Josh Rosen with the Dolphins, because he's getting screwed over wherever he's going, but that's besides the point. But Fitzpatrick is either going to start for the Dolphins in 2020, or he's going to be a backup for Tua and like teach him the ropes, being a veteran, so that's kind of his role right now. But but in his entire career, what what he has shown is when he has no expectations, he will play like one of the greatest of all time. He will play crazy football. And then when the team has some kind of expectation for him or some, and they want him to win, that is when he goes to being just one of the worst quarterbacks ever, as shown by his track record so far. And... He will, and what he does is he show, like with the Jets in 2015, he will shine his great potential, and then if a franchise is fooled and try to pay him, that's when he goes back to being Fitz Tragic, as shown in 2016 after the crazy numbers he put up in 2015 with the Jets. And in his entire career, he has not once led a team on a playoff run, and after a terrific season, if he gets paid, he will never be that good with that organization again. And that's just the thing. His The potential he flashes when he is Fitzmagic is enough for another team to pick him up because they want to get, they want that potential. But then when he starts for them, if it, he has the potential to play really, really good. And then if they see that and they start expecting that from him, that's when he goes back to being just... A, re a really bad quarterback and this is 
just the legacy of Fitzception. You play really great, and then the team either pays you or they kind of have some expectation for you to play really well. And then he will go back to being one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL. But because of that promise that he shows, he will always get another chance. And that is one of the craziest things in NFL history, or at, or even he's one of the well, best known journeymen in the NFL. Potential equals another chance, but his potential never shows twice with a team, and that's the ma and that's the legacy of Fitzception. So, what do you think? Will he ever do that in his career? Have like have a terrific season, and then they pay him, and then he'll consistently be able to be a great starter. As as by his track record, probably not. What do you think? Will he be able to at some point? Let me he, let me know. This has been a take by Sports Stories. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.